Hi class. So I wanted to give you a quick review of the different ways of multiplying two vectors together because these will continue to be important in physics, especially in this upcoming chapter. So if we have two vectors, let's say we have vector a, which has components ax, um, I already messed up, huh? ax, oh. ay, az, and then you have a vector b, similarly with components bx, by, bz. And we want to think of different ways of multiplying these vectors together. So the first, of course, is the dot product. And the second is the cross product. So we'll start by talking about the dot product. So this is often referred to also as the scalar product. And that's because in this way of multiplying vectors together, you multiply a vector a dot a vector b, and then you end up with a scalar quantity, so just a number. No longer, there's no longer a direction associated with it. So a dot b. So now there's a couple different ways you can compute this. The first is the most useful if you're given the components like this. And this is simply given by ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. So you simply multiply the x component by the x component, the y by y, z by z. It's pretty straightforward. So the next thing you might want to do, if instead of being given the components, if you're given, say, the angle between the two vectors and their magnitude, then this can also be calculated as the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of theta, theta being the angle between the two. So let's say, for instance, um, if our vectors were, this was A, and this is, let's not draw them at a right angle to each other. So this is B going off at some other direction with some angle theta between the two, and you were given this information, then this would be the easiest way to compute the dot product. So that's pretty straightforward. So in, there's lots of physics applications one that you should have learned last quarter and will be important again in chapter 10 is computing the work, which is the force dotted into the displacement. Um, so F dot DS, um, for instance. Um, so, so that is one example of where you would use the dot or scalar product in physics. So the next thing we'll want to talk about is the cross product. So this is sometimes also called the vector product. And it's called that because unlike the dot product, here you multiply these two vectors together and you get another vector. So we have A, and this is denoted with a cross, A cross B. So again, we have a couple different ways of computing these, this quantity. And the first is the most useful if you're given the components just like this. So the way I remember how to do it is using something called the determinant which you may or may not have learned before. So if you've never learned about a determinant before, then maybe take a few minutes and look it up. Or, you know, it's not actually not that important. You could just remember the formula for this. Uh, using the determinant to compute it is just a, a handy way of remembering uh, the way the formula looks, because this is a little more complicated than the dot product. So you fill in the matrix this way. All right. And then to compute the determinant, what you do, the first term is you take x hat, and then maybe let's use a different color. So first you multiply it times a y b z. And then you subtract from that a, z, b, y. So what you'll notice is the components that we use in the new vector, which is in the x direction, doesn't involve any of the original x components. It involves the y and the z components. And then the next term you always subtract. 
And now we start with y hat. And again, for the y hat direction piece of the new vector, we don't use the y components of the original vectors. Instead, we use the x and the z components. So now we go all the way across, and we have ax times bz. And then we subtract az times bx. And then finally, we add the third piece, and this is in the z hat direction. And again, we now will not include the z hat original components. And we have ax times by minus ay times bx. Now again, if you aren't uh, familiar with the determinants, that's OK. You can simply look up this formula or remember it. And that's, that's also a, a great way to compute the cross product. So again, you might be given the magnitude and direction of vectors, but not their components. So you could compute, let's say, the magnitude of A cross B. So this now, we aren't thinking about the direction. We're just thinking about the magnitude. And that's given by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times now sine of the angle between the two vectors. So we'll see. So the difference between the magnitudes, of course, is you get cosine for the dot product and sine for the cross product. And so we need some direction associated with this. And the direction is simply given by the right hand rule again, where you do A cross B. And again, this is um, one thing that's really important to realize is that in the cross product, a cross B is equal to negative B cross A. So again, let's maybe write that over here. A cross B is equal to negative B cross A. So when you're doing the right hand rule, you always want to remember that you start by putting your fingers along the first vector and then curl them towards the second vector and not the other way around because then you'll make a sign error. And so the last thing to think about, so because the dot product depends on the cosine and the cross product depends on the sine, that if we have, for instance, so let's say A and B are parallel like this, then for the dot product, we get just the magnitude A times B. And this is because for 0, the cosine of theta goes to 1. So the dot product is maximized when two vectors are parallel to each other. On the other hand, if A and B are perpendicular to each other, <clears throat> then we know the cosine of 90 degrees goes to 0, so the dot product goes to 0. So that is when it's minimized. On the other hand, the cross product depends on the sine of the angle between the two. So for the sine, when the angle between the two is 0, as is the case for when they're parallel, then the cross product vanishes. But when the two vectors are perpendicular, then the sine of 90 is 1. So in that case, the magnitude is maximized. And you just simply get magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. Oh, and the one last thing I wanted to mention, I guess, is why the cross product will be important in your near future. So we said the dot product, for instance, is important in computing the work. The cross product is important in computing something called the torque. So the torque is actually the first thing that we'll talk about in our very first lecture in this class. And the torque is sort of like a force, but a force in particular that causes an object to rotate. So you really want to review this cross product because we'll need it right away in class the very first day. All right, see you there.